Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today we are going to get cozy with the cozy Christmas book tag. All right, everyone, we did it, we've made it. This is the very final Bookmas video, the final formal video that I'm filming for Bookmas. I don't know whether this is going to go up on Christmas day because that's a Sunday and that is typically when I would be posting my bi-weekly reading vlog or whether this is going to go up on Christmas Eve, but regardless, it is the very final video of this Bookmas series. And so today I thought it would be perfect to end on just a short, simple, sweet Christmas tag. This is the cozy Christmas book tag. This was created by Call Me After Coffee and I will be sure to leave her original video down below. Like I said, it is not very long, so this should be a short video, but it should be a fun one as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Prompt number one is Twinkling Lights. What is the most beautiful book that you own? And I own so many beautiful, beautiful books, but the one that I immediately always gravitate towards when it comes to beautiful books is my Illumicrate exclusive edition of Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. It has got this stunning gold foil. It has got gold sprayed edges. It is just stunning all around. And then look at those beautiful illustrations in here y'all this is just like the most beautiful book that I've ever seen in fact it was this specific edition that actually made me want to read this book I had no interest in this book originally but then I saw this cover and I was like I have to have this book and then luckily Illumicrate was releasing a set with this and Muse of Nightmares and I and I jumped on it because this was just absolutely one of the most beautiful books that I've ever seen in my entire life and I'm so beyond thrilled to have this on my shelves Question number two is the perfect tree. Will you pay more to get the prettiest edition of a book? And yes, I absolutely will as evidenced by Strange the Dreamer. I didn't have to have that edition, especially since I had never read the book before and I didn't even know if I was going to like the book, but I just needed that edition so badly. If there is a book coming out that I'm anticipating and I know it's going to be released in a special edition, I will absolutely wait and pay more for that special edition because I know that I would just do it later anyway. So I'm not gonna like purchase the regular edition if I know that the beautiful special edition is coming out or if I already have one edition of the book and then special editions are announced and I like the book I will go ahead and pay extra for those beautiful special editions. Question number three is build a snowman make a Christmas book stack in either color or theme. Okay so let's see what I got. Okay, so as y'all know, I've been purchasing a lot of Christmas related books because I did a try a chapter series here for Bookmas. So I grabbed some of those for the theme and here they are. I definitely have more that I couldn't find at the moment to build this stack, but these are all Christmas themes. Now let me actually see if I can do one by color. Okay, so here is my color stack. I definitely have more red and green books, but I could not hold them all at once. So you have A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. You have Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. You have Seven Up and Heart Eight by Jenna Ivanovich. And then you have Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Question number four is Crackling Fire. What book makes you feel warm and cozy? And for this, I have to go with The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is one of my favorite romance series of all time. It is actually set in Alaska, so you definitely get the cold, chilly vibes. This will absolutely warm your heart. This follows Kala and Jonah and their relationship. It is a hate to love, grumpy sunshine romance, and it just completely fills my heart with warmth. There are also a lot of harder hitting elements in here, such as grief and complicated family dynamics and strained family relationships. And I just loved absolutely everything about this book and this series in general. I will constantly sing its praises on my channel because I love it so so much. Question number five is Knee High Socks. What is the longest book you've ever read? So I went to Goodreads to all of the books that I've read and I sorted by page number and the highest page number it said was Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix at 912 pages but I really don't think that's true. I don't think any of the Harry Potter books broke 800 or 900 pages so I'm going to go ahead and set that one aside because I actually don't have my copies of Harry Potter here at my house. They're all at work on this Harry Potter bookshelf that I have there but I'm almost positive that this next one is correct and that is Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. This is the illustrated edition and it comes in at 880 pages. I will say that about 40 of those pages is an appendix of like all of the families and stuff like that but even without the appendix the story lasts to page about 843 which is still the longest. Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass comes in second with just over 800 pages so this is definitely the longest one that I've ever read. You can see that I definitely tabbed it up but this was a chunky chunky boy. Question number six is ugly sweater. What is the ugliest book that you own? And I don't know. I don't necessarily think I own any ugly books. Hold on. Let me peruse my shelves and see what I can find. Okay. So I noticed that a lot of older suspense thrillers, like their hardcovers are not great at all. And so because I've been reading the Alphabet Murders by Sue Grafton for so long, and I've been trying to collect all of those books in hardback, some of the older ones that were published many, many years ago are really, really ugly. Actually, the books were originally published in the early 1980s. And I don't know if the editions that I have are that old. I don't think so, but they are definitely ugly. The one that I went ahead with is K is for Killer. And you can see like the stickers here, but aside from that, it's just this dark background with this 
with this hand. <laughs> like, I don't even know what is this. I just checked and this was published in 1994. So this is almost 30 years old. I also have J is for Judgment, which was published in 1993. And it is just like this, the sailboat. And I honestly, I don't remember the plot of these ones. So I don't know if these covers even match the plot, but they're not great. Number seven is Blizzards, a book set in winter or a book that gives you the chills or has dark themes. I actually just made a video for Bookmas about all of my favorite wintry isolation thrillers. And so for this, I absolutely have to go ahead and go with my number one, No Exit by Taylor Adams. This book has extremely dark themes. It is 100% wintry. In fact, the wintry atmosphere in this book is like a character unto itself. I remember being so engrossed by the atmosphere. I could just feel like I was there. So this has absolutely everything that you might expect from this book. It has wintry, chilly atmosphere. It is high stakes. It is survivalist. It is dark themes. It's got a little bit of everything and I love this one so much. And of course it features a blizzard. So I can't think of a better book to fit this prompt. Question number eight is home for the holidays. For the rereaders out there, are there any books for you that feel like going home? Now I'm not really a rereader. I have reread most of the books in the Harry Potter series. And even if I hadn't, that probably would have been my first instinctual answer, but I want to do something a little bit different. So even though I haven't reread this, I want to talk about Forever Wild, which is a novella in the Simple Wild series, which I talked about earlier. This this is a tiny little novella that is set around Christmas time and it follows the same characters and their families as they're all gathering for Christmas and the shenanigans that ensue. I am not normally a novella person. I don't normally read prequel or sequel novellas just because I don't feel the need to, but because I love this series with my whole heart and soul, I absolutely had to pick this up. I believe I read it in Christmas of 2020 and it was perfection. It was everything I could possibly want and it absolutely made me feel like coming home. This whole series makes me feel like coming home because I love the characters and I love the world so very much. This was just the coziest, most heartwarming, touching, book that I could ever imagine. I gave this one five stars and I was basically in tears through most of it just because I loved revisiting the characters. I loved meeting the new characters. I love some of the events that happen in here and just being with this family during the Christmas season. Like I said, it was perfection. It was everything that I could have ever wanted from a novella. And I just get like goosebumps and swoony feelings every single time I think about this because I love this novella so much. And this is absolutely like coming home because I feel like this series and this characters and this atmosphere and this world is like coming home to me. So even though I haven't reread this, it almost feels like I have just because it was a continuation of those other books and it really 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 feels like coming home with this. All right y'all that is it. We did it. We have completed book miss. No matter what you celebrate this holiday season or if you don't celebrate at all I hope that you are able to spend this time with your family that you feel safe and loved and warm and blessed. I know that this time can be very lonely and sad for a lot of people and if that is you if you are experiencing those feelings during this holiday season I want you to know that I'm thinking about you and I'm sending you love and hugs and I hope that you take the time to care for yourself and your mental health and that you just do what you need to do to get through this time. I want to send a huge huge thank you to everyone who joined me on this bookmas journey who watched all of my videos even if you didn't comment i so appreciate you doing that and for my regular commenters thank you so much i noticed you i loved that you were here every single day commenting on my videos i love connecting with the online bookish community that is why i'm here that is why i'm doing all of this and so i hope that you enjoyed bookmas this year i absolutely hope to do it next year if i'm in a position to do so and if you think of any other videos you might like to see from me during that time please feel free to leave those ideas down below it was tough coming up with so many video ideas for this series but that's that's it for me for Bookmas, y'all. As always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.